Well, hello again. This is uh, Stereo Police. Back with another episode of Audio File University. And this time it's going to be a follow up on our previous uh, lecture on resistors. And uh, what I'd like to do is take a moment to. Um, segue from sort of theory into a practical application of that theory. And therefore I've titled this one Practical Uses of Resistors in Audio and Hi-Fi. And I want to delve into one practical use somewhat deeply and then I'll want to get into another one kind of broadly and then you can explore it on your own if you're interested in it. So let's dive right in. Let's start out with the crossover network. I love loudspeakers. Speakers. I, I think that uh, the speaker, the loudspeaker is Probably, in my humble opinion, the single most important component in one's audio system. And when I say important, I'm referring to um, having the ultimate effect on your quality of sound, on whatever sound you prefer. And um, one of the most important components, eh, I can't say important, I can't, uh, I struggle for words sometimes. Um, one of the components in the speaker that has a major impact on, on, on the sound quality of a speaker is the crossover network. So here we're looking at a crossover network that I uh, that I pulled from Amazon.com. That's currently for sale, and um, I pulled this image because it basically has three distinct components on there. It has uh, inductors and capacitors and resistors, and we're here today to discuss resistors. And these are power resistors. They don't look like the little tiny carbon resistors that we uh, talked about before with color codes on it. Um, these are high powered resistors, but nonetheless, nonetheless, they're resistors. Um, so what is their function? What do they do? Well, we already talked about what they do, um, but I want to give you a practical example of how important they are uh, in, in real life. So let's look at a schematic diagram of a crossover and don't be intimidated by this. Um, some crossovers get really complicated and um, let's not concern ourselves with the, the mid-range and the woofer. Let's just concern ourselves with the tweeter for example. And you can see here that in this particular crossover network, we have two resistors. And we're going to talk about what their function is and how important they are. And I will say, just as an aside, um, <clears throat> the, we have a capacitor right here. And interestingly, as you know, a tweeter is a very uh, delicate device and it absolutely does not want to see base frequencies. You can imagine if you were to send it, um, you know, like something like 60 hertz or 70 hertz or 40 or 30 hertz, you know, something that would make that woofer vibrate, that it would absolutely destroy that tweeter. So the function of that capacitor, and this is an inductor and this is a capacitor, the function of these two devices is to 
block or remove low frequencies. All right, so it's called a high pass filter. It passes high frequencies. And um, what I wanted to discuss real quick here, and this is just an aside, is to forget the inductor for a second. It wouldn't really even be needed um, in this circuit. Um, we could just have a capacitor here if we wanted to. I mean, it, I'm certainly it's needed in this design, but it's not always needed. And you can imagine that this capacitor, if you remember back from our discussion of capacitors, is just two plates. And these two plates are separated by distance. And if you remembered, what I told you is once that capacitor is charged, it looks like an open circuit. And, and just look at it right here, right here. I mean, it is an open circuit physically. So it will not pass DC, direct current. And if you look at frequency you know, versus voltage, let's say, we have zero hertz. That's DC. And let's say here we have 20 kilohertz. You know, these are typical, what we typically say is an audio band, although few people can hear above 15 kilohertz. So zero hertz is what we call DC, direct current. And this capacitor will not allow direct current to pass. And as we'll <clears throat> talk about in the future, it will also not allow certain low frequencies to pass either, just based on its nature. So it will act as a high pass filter, only passing high frequencies. So I just thought you'd find that interesting. All right, let me just erase some of this garbage here. All right. We're here to talk about resistors, and you can see we have a 3.3 ohm resistor here, which is very, very typical in a crossover network in a series resistor. And actually, we wouldn't necessarily even need that one, but there's a reason for it. All right, let's dive right in. Before we get into a practical, um, we're going to get into a, a practical, a, a real design here. You guys are becoming uh, junior engineers. We need to discuss and understand uh, the voltage divider rule. And it's really, really simple. And I'm going to talk about conventional flow here, not electron flow. Does not matter. I'm going to draw a circuit, the battery, and two resistors. And let's just say they're the same value, R1 and R1. And if you remember, current is going to flow through this circuit, and it's going to be the same current everywhere because it's a series circuit. The current can't disappear. Um, and <clears throat> therefore, the same current is going to flow through this resistor, and the exact same current is going to flow through this resistor. Therefore, and this is a potential right here, um, an energy potential, and there's a certain voltage right here, and of course the voltage down here is going to be zero, or we can call this our ground. So by the time we trace this circuit and come back here, the voltage has to be zero. So there's going to be a voltage dropped right here, and there's going to be a voltage dropped right here. So if the same amount of current is going to pass through this resistor and that resistor, <clears throat> and these resistors are the same value, then the exact same voltage is going to be dropped across both resistors. And that voltage is going to be 1 
half of V, of this V, and one half of that V. It has to be, if the resistors are the same value, because the exact same current is going to be flowing through both of them. That's the voltage divider rule. Now, where it gets tricky is when these resistors are different values. And all we need to do is we have this simple mathematical equation. And the mathematical equation is, if we look, yeah, and here's the, <clears throat> the schematic of it, and we want to know, and let me back up for a minute, <clears throat> the use of this circuit is that, for example, practically speaking, we have an input voltage that we want to drop, and we want to reduce it to something lower. And that's exactly what we want to do here with the sweeter. Okay, we want to reduce that voltage because it's too high. We want to equalize it in this system. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. So we want to reduce that voltage. So it's all about the ratios of these two resistors. So the voltage divider rule says that V out, okay, and this is V out right here, is going to be equal to the input voltage multiplied by, and it's just a ratio, okay, it's going to be R out, which is in this case is R2, divided by R total. And R total is R1 plus R2. It's just a ratio. It's proportionality. And that's it. It's that simple. So if you want to study that for a minute, and we're going to make practical use of this to equalize a tweeter. And um, you don't need a calculator for this because it's done for you, but this is a, this is a, a pretty straightforward, simple example. Again, I have pulled references. I encourage you to visit these websites uh, if you want additional information or to study this stuff. So in this case, we have 5 volts in, and we have two different values, a, one, a 1K and a 2K resistor. And um, therefore, if you actually want to get a calculator out and run it, I encourage you to do it. But using the proportionality, um, V out is going to be 5 volts, right? 5 volts times, okay, remember, Vn times R2 divided by R total. So times 2K divided by 3K. And you should get 3.3 .3 volts. It's that simple. Now let's look at what's actually going on with a tweeter we need to equalize. Okay, this is what crossover networks do and, and this is in a real simple form. They actually get a little more complicated and designers have more concerns than just equalizing uh, the decibel level. There's other concerns like lobing and some other uh, acoustical concerns that they, they want to deal with as well. And there's no need to get into that stuff here. Uh, that would obscure the point, but this is a very simple example. So in this case, uh, you know, there really should be a capacitor in there. But um, in this case, we have our woofer and we have our tweeter. I want a horn on that. Okay. And if you can see... We have not equalized anything, and tweeters are almost always more sensitive than woofers. So they're going to, given the same input uh, voltage, they're going to output more, more uh, pressure, sound pressure level. So if you were to box these two things, you're going to have a lot more um, high frequency energy, so that the speaker's going to be way too bright. And you can see that in this graph here. This is frequency right here. And this is volume in decibels. 
So how do we fix it? Well, we fix it with resistors. And in this case, um, this designer has chosen to use one resistor in series and one resistor in parallel, which is a good choice for, for practical reasons. And having done that and, chose, and chosen the proper values, we've now equalized the, the, um, the sound pressure levels between the woofer and the tweeter. And we have a nice, um, um, nice coherent equalized system. All right, so let's let's run some numbers here, and what and what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're not going to do this series parallel arrangement. We're going to keep it a little more simple. We're going to use the simplest possible arrangement, which is not practically speaking the most desirable way to do it, but um, for demonstrative purposes, let's let's do it this way. So in this example, I want you to pretend that uh, the tweeter is a simple resistor. In actuality, it's not. It's, uh, it's also an inductor, among other things, but um, we don't need to concern ourselves with that. And in order to equalize the level, we're going to add, okay, we're going to add a series resistor to drop we're going to drop voltage in order to reduce the output of this tweeter. You see, it's just, I mean, that's a fantastic use for a resistor, one of many. All right, so here's a little diagram. And um, we're going to start with 2.83 volts, common value we often use. Um, it really doesn't matter what we start with, but um, there are reasons for that um, that I uh, probably better not get into but it doesn't matter what we start with we could start with uh, uh, other values but let's start with 2.83 volts and you can see in this scenario um, let's just say I've I've run some numbers and I've decided that in order to in order to equalize the volume with the woofer I need to achieve two volts at the output um, given an input of 2.83. So what I need to achieve here, instead of 2.83, I need to achieve 2 volts. Okay, but right now, without a resistor, I'm going to have 2.83 volts across um, the tweeter because there's nothing else in the circuit. So this tweeter has to drop the full 2.83 volts. I'm showing a battery here, but in actuality, this is an AC signal, you know, from your uh, amplifier. You know, so right now in this circuit, you know, I, I'm, the tweeter is getting the full, the full voltage. So let's add a series resistor. All right. I want to add a series resistor to achieve that two volts that I've decided that I need for equalization. Okay, and I've, and I've yeah, for equalization. Um, now, all we need to do is run the voltage divider rule to figure out what value R we need here. We know what V out is. We know what V in is. All right. We know what R2 is. R2 is 8 ohms. We have to solve <clears throat> for R1. Uh, using uh, simple multiplication and division. So let's do it. And uh, what you can do if you wish is to pause the video and you can study the math here. I've tried to uh, string it out so you can look. 
and see what I've done here. I'm not going to walk through it with you, but there it is right there. I've run the numbers and I've achieved 3.4 ohms, at least according to my calculations. So if we add a 3.4 ohm resistor in there in series, we will achieve that 2 volts right there and we will have equalized the level or the output in sound pressure of that tweeter to that of, of the woofer. And uh, that is exactly, well, they came up with 3.3 ohms, but um, that's what they achieved, this website. And um, I don't want to get into detail here, but what they've what they've done here, and you can skip this if you want, but what they've done is they've reduced the output by three decibels. And, and if you want to study this, you can figure out how that's done. But um, they've they've used um, the equation for power, v squared over r. And they've, by running the number for power, they've reduced the power out, the power of, of supplied to the tweeter from one watt to one half watt to reduce the decibels from 92 dB to 89 dB, which is a reduction by, of 3 dB. And any reduction of 3 dB is a reduction in power by one half. All right. Now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna prolong uh, this particular slide, but uh, practically speaking, and you saw this uh, from well above when I showed you that realistic crossover. Practically speaking, we typically want a series parallel arrangement, um, and. I uh, better not get into why, but it's it's a better it's a better way of doing things because the amplifier will continue to see we've reduced the voltage, but the amplifier will continue to see an eight ohm load. Whereas if you don't use this series parallel arrangement, the amplifier having added that resistor will will now see an eight plus 3.3 ohm load, 8, 9, 10, 11.3 ohm load. So this arrangement is a little bit better in that respect. And this is called an L-pad, L-pad arrangement. All right. Take a little break here, and we're going to talk about uh, the potentiometer and the potentiometers are used quite all over the place um, for volume knobs um, they're used on circuit boards to make minute adjustments you know during after the manufacturing process they're used for um, bass treble uh, balance controls they just have so many applications. Um, they're being rapidly replaced by digital technology these days, but they're still being used. And um, they're also, uh, in the old style potentiometers are being replaced, not replaced, but they're substituted oftentimes by ladder networks using discrete resistors, but nevertheless, the theory works almost the same. And the schematic depiction of a potentiometer looks like this, and it's pretty much what it is. And this is, uh, this is a depiction of, of what's called the wiper, and it moves when you rotate uh, the shaft. Okay, so, and this right here is 
um, a layer of carbon, but it's, it's, it's a resistor. So if I were to draw this out, let's just look at terminals one and, and three. That's a resistor. So if this were a 10, sorry about my writing here. If this were a 10 uh, K kilo ohm potentiometer and I put up um, if I measure the resistance from terminals one to three, I would measure 10 kilo ohms. Forgetting the wiper for a second. Now, in this arrangement, if the wiper was right in the middle, I'm going to draw it this way. So here's terminal one, terminal three, and terminal two. So if this wiper was right in the middle, dead center, you rotated that knob to dead center, for example, and this is a linear, not, a, not an exponential or audio taper. It was right in the middle. You'd have a 5K resistor here and a 5K resistor there. Okay? So that's how it would look. It would be a voltage divider, just like we just talked about. Just like we just talked about. It's a voltage divider, so it would reduce the voltage. So you have input voltage. You'd have one half of that one half of that voltage appearing at the output, and you can see as I as I as that wiper moves up and down, the output of that voltage will be variable. Just think about that, and I'm not going to go into any more detail. You can just sit here and think about that. That's how elegant and simple and useful these things are. And the potentiometer is a voltage divider. And there's also another version of it where we can connect these two terminals together. And we can create what's called a rheostat that is not a voltage divider, but it controls current. So as current comes in, and we move that wiper up and down, you know, we can create basically a variable resistor. So as you can see, the current will come in, and as I rotate that wiper up and down, I'm changing the resistance. And, um, and therefore, I'm changing the flow of current. I'm going to draw one example. Of, I'm going to draw two examples of that. So let's see. I'm going to try to draw a little better for you here. A, B. Now let's say that wiper is all the way at the bottom. Um, like that. All right. Let me draw another example. Where that wiper is all the way at the top. And we have current flowing. So when that wiper is all the way at the top, we have a resistor in parallel with a dead short. Well, if we have a dead short, then we have zero resistance. All the current's going to flow through the dead short. Right? But in this scenario over here, 
the wipers at the bottom, so there is no, there's nothing. I mean, all the current has to go through the full resistance. But if that wiper is somewhere in between, then the current flows through some resistance and then goes through the dead short. We have a variable resistor. Uh, it's called a rheostat. The rheostat is, controls current, whereas a tensiometer is a, is a voltage divider. All right, so now you've seen practical use of resistors in high-end audio. I uh, hope you found that useful. This one's hopefully a little shorter than the previous ones, but nevertheless, uh, everything's going to build and build. Thank you very much for joining me, um, Stereo Police, and uh, hope to see you again real soon.